Now, we are joined by Alan Beam, Director of International and Security Affairs Program at Australia Institute. Uh, Alan, first of all, uh, your reaction to Iran-backed Houthi rebels claiming to have seized an Israeli-linked ship. How concerned are you that this could escalate to broader regional instability? Uh, I'm actually quite concerned about this, though it's important to recognise that we don't have a lot of information about this yet. Uh, but it does internationalise the problem in the Middle East in a very surprising way, and I think in a very unpredictable way. It brings clearly Japan into the negotiations, uh, but in a way that I think is most difficult for Japan to be able to itself meet the problems of having its vessel hijacked. So we're going to have to wait to see exactly what the demands of the, the Houthi rebels are and exactly why they think that it might be uh, an Israeli vessel. Uh, that, to me, is quite puzzling. And uh, as I say, until I've got a bit more intelligence on that, I don't think I could make a truly informed comment. Yeah, hopefully we'll know more information about that soon. In the meantime, 13,000 people have been killed in Gaza. That's according to the Hamas-run health ministry. That's nearly 10 times the losses Israel suffered from the 7 October attacks. French President Emmanuel Macron has spoken of the absolute necessity to distinguish terrorists from the population. Will Israel be held to account for their actions against civilians in Gaza? Look, I think Israel inevitably will be held to account for that. The, the attrition rate is extraordinary, really, uh, a factor of an order of magnitude, 10 times the, the number of, of people who were killed on the 7th of October is a very, very high exchange rate, as uh, as people say in this. And, and quite frankly, it's very difficult to see that that kind of activity is justified by the circumstances. So far, we really haven't seen a lot of results that have come from Israel's attack on the civilian infrastructure, uh, except the death of nearly 13,000 civilians. So, yes, Israel will be will be held to account, and you can see that happening already. Uh, the international community is becoming increasingly concerned by the vehemence of Israel's response and is pressuring Israel for a reduction in both tempo and intensity. Mm. But Israel's military, though, is reporting the discovery of a tunnel and weapons beneath Al-Shifa Hospital. Uh, but obviously, the, the reluctance to allow independent verification into these tunnels is raising some concerns. Why not allow external probe? And even if they are verified, would it significantly alter narrative on Israel's bombardment on hospitals? Look, there are a lot of unknowns around this. Uh, I'm surprised at this point that Israel hasn't found much, much more than they claim to have found. Uh, if that hospital is essentially uh, the command centre, at least underground, the command centre for Hamas, you might have expected Israel to be uh, using this for all it's worth. Uh, in fact, at this point, it seems to have rather little to go on. And making the case for this sustained bombardment of the infrastructure of northern Gaza uh, is beginning to stretch, I think, credit, well, credulity. And, and for that reason, I think Israel will have to be able to give evidence to support its actions. At this point, I think the evidence is not strong and we're going, I think, to need to see much more in the way of independent verification of what it does find to justify uh, quite the levels of destruction that Israel has mounted uh, upon the northern Gaza. Uh, it's a difficult issue. We, we know that uh, Hamas does like to hide in the civilian population. In fact, Gaza is so small, it's very hard to imagine where else they could go. But nonetheless, uh, Israel has got some grounds for that concern. But once having exercised its decision over that, it really does need to demonstrate the case. And I don't think that that has happened yet. There's increasing domestic pressure in Israel to secure the release of hostages. And earlier, the Qatari prime minister said only very minor obstacles remain to other Israeli hostages being released. How big a priority are they versus the goal of eradicating Hamas? Um, I think it's important, Steve, not to see these as being binaries. 
uh, to see them as uh, sort of competing objectives. Uh, they're very much the same set of objectives. Israel has to be able to reduce the threat from terrorism and at the same time be able to, to rescue the hostages and return them to their families. Uh, it's a difficult set of objectives to achieve either way. And I, I think until we have some kind of cessation of hostilities, till we have an ability for the international community to provide humanitarian aid for the people of Gaza who are in desperate circumstances at this point, and until we have an opportunity to see the evidence that Israel is able to mount for the continuation of its operations in northern Gaza, we're left wondering exactly what is the next phase. Um, at this point, we don't know exactly where the negotiations are going. Uh, the signs, I think, are optimistic, at least according to the Americans, but the, the role of Qatar in being able to free some of the hostages in return for a cessation of hostilities and at the same time the return of Palestinian hostages or prisoners in Israel, these are difficult issues and I still think that there's more time that is going to be needed to come to some kind of agreement around a cessation of hostilities. Look, there's no ceasefire here. Um, Mr Netanyahu has indicated that Israel is going to continue this for as long as it can uh, in order to eliminate and, and uh, exterminate uh, Hamas. Whether it can do that, who knows? I don't think so. And so we're in for a very long war in which a cessation is simply one step. We can't attach too much hope to it, I'm afraid. But there, there was a report over the weekend, though, a uh, Washington Post, that Israel and Hamas are close to agreement for a five-day pause in the fighting in exchange for the release of hostages. I mean, obviously no official confirmation yet, but based on your observation, how believable is this? Look, they may be close, but I'm not sure what close means in this circumstance. Um, is it a day or two, or are they still a week out? Uh, what's going to happen in the intervening amount of time? Will Israel launch even further bombardments of the civilian infrastructure of northern Gaza? There's a lot swinging on how this particular negotiation is being conducted. We don't know a lot about it. Uh, and when we have a bit more clarity as to timings and the nature of Israel's pause in hostilities, then we can't really say what the effect of it is going to be. Um, we're all hopeful, that that's for sure, but uh, there are so many unknowns in this particular conflict and um, I'm not going to forecast what's going to happen except that something must happen if the people of northern Gaza are to have any form of security whatsoever. They're in desperate need at the moment. The UN agencies simply can't support them while hostilities are still being conducted. So these negotiations are very important, and I'm certain that the, the White House, along with the government of, of Israel and the Qatari government, are working as hard as they can to come to an agreement, but there are a lot of obstacles in the way yet. Alan, thank you very much for your insight and your time this morning. Alan Beam, Director, International and Security Affairs Program at the Australia Institute.